Immortality is real. It comes from the flesh and blood of the living. Comes from the degradation of the dead. The morning will unearth their loved ones and bring them back to life. Many know that to do this means to perform a sacrifice. Few know that it is them that is the sacrifice. I was 20 years old when I died. My death had been slow and painful until the very end. And then there was nothing. No pain, no worries. Just an emptiness that lifted me, left me weightless and free. My mother couldn't bear my death though. I'd been her only daughter out of her children of three. Then they found a way to bring me back. A little black book. All pages had been left blank except for the one for resurrection. I'd been dead for months by the time they'd found the book and done all the preparations. I don't know much about what had gone on before I awoke once again, but I remember the flickering of candles, remember the veil of smoke that seemed to cloak the room, seemed to seal it away from the world. Remember the sound of bleeding, of hooves clopping nervously at my arrival, then fading away in the distance as I was dragged forward by my own feet. From what I can remember, I know the book had never disclosed the truth, that they would be my sacrifice and forever I'd walk the earth alone. I can only remember being cold. Remember feeling my bones ache as I clawed my way up from the dirt, could feel my flesh drawn tight yet brittle. Every step home had been one of great agony as what was left of me shambled forward. I thought myself in hell, only wishing for the void I'd slipped into after my death, yet I found myself lurching homeward until I was wrapped in smoke. And then there was warmth. Delicious warmth that flowed down my throat, and when I drank every drop, I began to chew till the meat was gnawed to the bone. I found myself able to breathe then. My lungs suddenly expanded, and I could smell my next meal shifting away from me. I reached out desperately. My hand latched onto a flailing limb, and I tightened my grip around it until I felt a snap. Shrieking? I paid it no mind as I sank my teeth downwards and drank. When I was halfway through this portion, I became able to see the truth around me, and as I finished eating, I squeezed my mother closer to me and looked across the room at what was left of my father. I remember laughing. I don't know why I laughed. Despite the heaviness in my stomach, I went on to the goat that they had tied up in the corner of the room. Their sacrifice, they had thought. I later wandered upstairs, a part of me dreading what I'd find, another more hungry part of myself hoping. I found my little brother then. He sat hiding under his bed. His little body froze as I strolled toward him. His eyes wide, reflecting the golden light of dusk. I reached out for him then. The more human part of me tried to do so gently, but still he screamed. I let him slip away from me. Let him push past me into the hall where I heard a door slam behind him and the distinctive click of a lock. His scream had been the thing that had saved him. I don't believe I would have stopped on my own. I left then. And only when one of my brothers died, did I ever visit again. Once for my eldest brother, and finally for the baby who'd been haunted with visions of his dead sister coming back to life. For decades I've wandered frozen at 20 years old. Every night I must eat. It does not matter whether I want to or not. The curse of my resurrection will take over and drag me to my next meal, so I've learned to hunt quietly, to conceal the remains. For what has been almost a century, I've numbed myself to killing and learned to carry my sentence of eternity, but I found it. The little black book. There are no replicas. It is the only one, and every page is blank, except for the one that you are searching for. I just wonder where I'll go if I were to allow myself to die now. It's been a while since I've been afraid of death.